we learn more about the x-ray tube in this part 2 of the video please watch part 1 of x-ray tube video where i have explained structure components and functions of each component of x-ray tube in detail my name is dr aishwarya i will leave the link of part 1 video in the description box below please check out the video before watching the current video in this video we learn principles and types of x-ray tube so as i said in part 1 we have discussed structure of x-ray tube its external structure internal functional components which are cathode and anode in detail types of anodes are also discussed in the first video in this video we will discuss the principles on which the x-ray tube operates anode usually the rotating anode is kept at an angle of 6 to 20 degrees which is also called as a target angle in order to focus the primary beam towards the patient the electron hits the target at the focal spot but this focal spot when visualized from down from the angle of patient the effective spot will be smaller than the actual focal spot and this principle is called line focus principle as in when the target angle decreases from 20 degrees to 6 degrees the effective focal spot size also decreases now here we can see the smaller the angle smaller the effective focal spot now the second principle is called the heel effect it means the intensity of x-ray that primary beam which is produced is not uniform throughout the beam the intensity varies here is the cathode anode and once the primary beam is produced there are two sides for the beam anode side of the beam where it is less intense and cathode side of the beam will have more intense x-rays the strength or quality of the x-ray beam produced will look something like this more intense towards cathode side and less intense towards anode side the reason for this being self attenuation of the primary x-ray beam produced by the anode itself that makes it less intense towards anode side and more intense towards the cathode side what are the clinical aspects or applications of this heel effect heel effect is less when smaller films are used or when larger film to focus distance is used so if you're placing the patient thin part has to be placed towards anode and thicker part has to be placed towards cathode towards high intensity we have learned what are the parts of the x-ray tube now we learn what are the factors governing the tube life so there are filament factors related to cathode anode factors related to anode and the housing factors in the anode factors we learn about radiographic tube charting and also anode thermal capacity which decides the life of the tube we draw something like cooling curves which i'll explain now now the filament in the cathode made of tungsten once heated up will emit electrons also the metal vaporizes over time which reduces the filament diameter and also the fumes will deposit onto the glass envelope reducing its life coming to anode factors each anode has an anode heat storage capacity which is a standard for itself it is how much of heat it, it is able to bear without cracking or melting cracking or melting will cause roughening of the target surface which reduces the x-ray production or output this heat storage capacity can be quantified in something called heat units so heat unit is the kvp used into mas into the seconds up to which the exposure is done for single phase generators for a three phase generator the formula will be kvp into mas into seconds into 1.4 nowadays we use three phase generator so we use this formula now speaking in general the average heat storage capacity of a typical anode will be 25 kilo heat units once the anode is heated up to its full capacity it has to be cooled down before the next exposure and the cooling rate is given by cooling curve which is drawn as heat units against time this is independent of anode rotation time 
Now each X-ray tube comes with a radiographic rating chart which considers both cathode and anode factors within it. It nothing but determines the maximum safe combination of the voltage and the filament current at which the X-ray tube can be used for a single exposure. This depends on three factors. The maximum rating reduces or is less for half wave rectification in comparison to full wave rectification. Coming to the size of tube focus or the focal spot, rating is less for a smaller focal spot. Next is the tube rotation. Higher rating is given when there is high disc rotation speed and a smaller anode angle. We learnt about the tube housing which contains oil bath in part 1 of the video. This is designed to remove heat from the x-ray tube but excess heat can cause the oil to boil and explode hence separate housing cooling charts are available for each x-ray tube. Now we learn about the causes of tube failure. This is the diagram of the x-ray tube. Extreme high voltage in cathode can cause pitting of or irregularity of the surface in cathode. The filament can burn out in high filament currents. Anode melting can occur due to electron beam. There can be puncturing of the glass envelope. And there can be damage to the bearings of the rotating anode. How to extend the life of the tube? Never exceed the maximum tube rating chart of KVP and MS and use only among those values. There should be warming up of anode before subjecting it to a large heat load. There should be adequate cooling of the filament, anode and housing before the next exposure. Use low filament current as low as possible for each exposure and do not run anode unnecessarily. Coming to most important part of the talk, types of X-ray tube. We already learned how the conventional X-ray tube works. Now we'll learn about spiral CT X-ray tube, the second type of X-ray tube used in CT. It is used for continuous exposure for more than 30 seconds for volume acquisitions. Hence, large anode diameter is there. There is faster rotation speed in these X-rays, 9000 RPM. The normal ones uses 3000 RPM. The focal spot is smaller for a higher spatial resolution, 0.6 mm, KVP 120 to 140 used, MAS up to 400. Next type of X-ray tube is the metal or ceramic X-ray tube which contains a metal housing instead of a glass housing. Advantages of metal casing is it has three ceramic insulators. One is at the cathode one is at the anode which is used to line the high power cables next ceramic coating is at the molybdenum stem so three are done this has a better shelf life than the glass envelopes because there will be less off focus radiation in metal envelopes because metal absorbs excessive electrons or x-rays which are off focus it has a longer tube life and higher heat loading capacity is there for metal tubes and the ceramic is made of aluminium oxide coming to grid controlled x-ray tube which is a short answer question for md dnb students in this we know that focusing cup is kept at a negative potential in relation to the filament at cathode now increase the negative potential to up to minus 100 voltage. It will stop the flow of electrons from cathode to anode and shuts down the tube current. So acts as a grid to control the X-ray production. Okay. So that negative potential between the focusing cup and the filament which is applied and increased or decreased will act as a switch for the tube current and hence prevents or increases x-ray production these are used in dsa and semi radiography x-ray tubes 
coming to x-ray tubes used in angiography or dsa machines or c arms in angiography smaller focal spot is required for resolution and few images per second is sufficient hence high anode storage capacity is required for dissipating the heat anode angle is um, up to 10 degrees focal spot is very small 0.4 to 0.7 and kvp 40 to 120 in fluoroscopy x-ray tube continuous x-ray exposure is required with low ma 1 200th of normal x-ray tube mas is used metal tubes are used with rotating anode made of compound material in mobile or portable x-ray units there should be a simpler system high frequency generators are used which occupy less space and provide constant potential in these tubes mammography tube again a short answer question which is very important to know the difference between conventional and mammography tube because there is so many differences conventional tube has polyenergetic beam of x-rays coming out of it tungsten is usually used as a target material and also tungsten used as a filament material sometimes rhenium can be added anode angle is 6 to 20 degrees in conventional tube coming to mammography tube in order to obtain optimum tissue contrast the average x-ray beam energy should be 17.5 kilo electron volt the anode of the target material in mammography tube is also made of molybdenum. The electron beam is at 30 kilo electron volt and the X-ray energy produced will be from 17 to 19 kilo electron volt. The filter placed at the tube window is also made of molybdenum in mammography tube. It absorbs all the general radiation allowing only the characteristic radiation of 17 to 19 kilo electron volt to pass through it. When the same material used for target and filters, it's called a spectral window principle. This is used in mammography tubes. Those were the differences in the anode of mammography tube. Coming to cathode, here the cathode doesn't have double filament. It has only a single filament and a single focusing cup. Runs on low voltage that is 30 kilo voltage and the filament current will be from 100 to 25 milliamperes focal spot is smaller with the smallest among all the x-ray tubes that is 0.3 to 0.35 millimeters looking at the anode differences again rotating anode used as molybdenum target characteristic radiation is from 17.5 to 19.5 kilo electron volt anode angle is kept at 0 to 10 degrees average is around 6 degrees in the mammography tubes that's all about the x-ray tubes in detail. Watch our part 1 and part 2. For more physics videos, please comment below and follow our YouTube page, Radiology Doodles.